In these clips, we see P-47s taxing and engaging in combat in the European theater. The intent of this video is to review the results of an 8th Air Force study which collected Thunderbolt pilot comments, assessed the P-47's combat performance in 111 aerial engagements, and we address why two-thirds of the engagements resulted in the German fighters escaping the engagement undamaged. The Thunderbolts were known to be a tough fighter, with its ability to take more punishment than the P-38 or P-51. Its design traded robustness, 8-gun firepower, and a large 8-ton size for range, although the later end models almost closed the gap range with the Mustangs by adding more internal fuel capacity and external fuel tanks. This page from a declassified 1945 66th Fighter Wing document titled A History of the 8th USAAF Fighter Command summarizes pilot evaluation and experiences with regard to the P-47. The 8th operated out of Great Britain. The 66th Fighter Wing was part of the 3rd Air Division of the 8th Army Air Forces. The 3rd Division was commanded by General LeMay before he was transferred to the Pacific. They operated both Mustangs and Thunderbolts. The 100th Bomb Group was also part of the 3rd Air Division as part of the 13th Bomb Wing. Pilot opinion is a valuable measure of the effectiveness of a plane's combat performance. Thunderbolt pilots were resistant to swapping out their Thunderbolts with Mustangs. One issue was the Mustang's cooling system was vulnerable to damage. The P-51's engine would seize if its cooling system sustained battle damage. This could occur in as little as 3 minutes. In comparison, the P-47s had more firepower and performed better when at altitudes above 5,000 feet. Pilots indicated P-47s could match any German piston-powered fighter and was better in some respects than the FW-190s, its German rival. Little mechanical issues were experienced once the teething issues had been resolved. Additional range can be expected by throttle control during the long-range bomber escort missions. External fuel tanks do not alter the plane's flight characteristics. In dives, German planes outpaced the P-47 over the first 2,000-foot altitude loss. Then, the Thunderbolts could catch and outspeed the ME-109s or FW-190s after a 7 to 10,000-foot altitude loss. It was faster in level speed than any German plane, and once on a German fighter's tail, it would likely shoot down its opponent, unless the enemy found a cloud to hide in. It possessed excellent visibility from the bubble canopy. This image shows a newer bubble canopy versus the older Razorback-style canopy. It had superior firepower than any German fighter. Although the German fighters upgraded their armaments during the war, these weapons were optimized to attack bombers and were less effective against fighters. The plane's role, versatility, and ability to absorb damage added to pilot confidence. If targeting twin-engine fighters, it was equivalent to shooting fish in a barrel. P-47 pilots indicated it was the best Allied fighter. P-47 pilots fought with high morale. Its weakness was its fuel consumption. This graph from a 1945 document titled 7th Fighter Command on Iwo Jima outlines the fuel consumption per hour of the Thunderbolt, Mustang, and Black Widow operating from March 7, 1945 to August 15, 1945. The P-51 consumes 59.6 gallons per hour, where the P-47 consumes 106.3 gallons per hour. The Thunderbolt consumes fuel at a rate 78% higher than the Mustang. The document goes on. 8th Air Force Operations Research Statisticians reviewed P-47 gun camera footage assessing factors that led to enemy aircraft kills. Key points of the study include duration of fire is not a factor in the results of a combat engagement. The average number of machine gun bursts equated to 4.2. The average length of burst equated to 0.94 seconds. The P-47's Browning M2 50 caliber machine gun's rate of fire is between 700 to 850 rounds per minute, as defined in this 1944 armaments document. This equates to 13 rounds per second average rate of fire. Each of the Thunderbolt's guns are firing 12 rounds during the .94 second burst, or a total converging bullet stream of 96 API rounds per burst. As discussed in this channel's video, the duration of burst should be around one half to one second. Longer bursts overheat the barrel, may cause cartridge cook-off, will increase bullet grouping dispersion, reducing the converging bullet stream strike density.
P-47 pilots underestimated the actual range of the enemy aircraft during combat by a factor of two. This is critical as fighter pilots were trained to open fire at effective ranges of 400 yards or less, as discussed in this channel's video. If the aerial target is within the effective range of 400 yards, the pilots do not have to account for bullet ballistic effects of penetration, gravity, air resistance, or pattern dispersion, as defined in this 1945 USAAF Fighter Gunnery Manual. The 400-yard effective firing range applies to both air and ground targets. More than half the bullets were fired when the target was beyond 300 yards and 20% at distances beyond 600 yards. Misjudging distance was also prevalent in bomber gunners as they also underestimated distances by a factor of two, as discussed in this 1946 Airborne Fire Control document. The following combat results can be expected based on the firing range. 658 yards, no strikes on aircraft. 392 yards, some damaging strikes. 323 yards, aircraft probably destroyed. 253 yards, bullet strikes destroyed the enemy aircraft. Out of 111 P-47 air-to-air -air engagements, only 37 enemy aircraft were claimed destroyed. This page defines destroyed, probably destroyed, and damaged. From a 1945 8th Air Forces operations document, an aircraft is considered destroyed in air-to-air -air combat if it has been seen to crash, disintegrate, or be enveloped by flames, land in allied control territory. The pilot bailed out. A typical, unsuccessful P-47 attack plays out as follows. The P-47 pilot is tracking an enemy aircraft from behind and opens fires from 600 yards, which he believes is in range at 300 yards. The deflection firing angle is 30 degrees right or left. He fires three or four short, one second bursts, and misses. He continues to close the range to the real distance of 200 yards and aligns close to the target 6 o'clock. His fire wavers a couple of degrees, likely due to rudder skidding while firing, to get some bullet strikes. He has wasted much ammo due to faulty aim by firing too far away from the target in an out-of-the-range deflection shot. The lack of strikes is not due to bullet stream density or bullet convergence pattern issues. If he can hold fire to a real range of 250 yards, the bullet stream will strike the target and kills are assured. In two-thirds of air-to-air -air attacks, the German fighter is not struck by the thunderbolts. This lack of strikes can be attributed to misjudging the range to the target. At the end of World War II, it became clear fighters required two types of radar, one pointing forward for gunnery range estimation and one pointing in his rear for tail warning. As discussed in this 1946 Army Air Force's Scientific Advisory Group document titled Radar and Communications, the most successful air-to-air -air engagements occur when the pilot can accurately estimate range and hold fire until the target is within the gun's effective range. A forward-facing radar could cue the pilot when the enemy aircraft is within range. This will remove the inherent error in pilot range estimation. This will be advantageous for fast attacking jets like the P-80. Forward-facing ranging radar is a story for another day. If you've enjoyed this P-47 pilot and combat statistics evaluation and found it informative and interesting, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.